Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to learn how to create environments inside of Anaconda and this way you can run your Python scripts and use things like Jupyter Notebook. So let's get right into that. So one of the first things I guess you want to ask is why do we need environments? Well, basically uh, a Python environment allows you to install libraries and other dependencies that you may use in your code. So pandas, for example, uh, matplotlib, numpy, things like that. But say, for example, you have a project and it's using Python 2 or 2.7 and you have another project and you're using Python 3. Now, the libraries and dependencies for these two different versions of Python will be different. So one of the big problems is if you've only got one environment you're going to have a clash of libraries which will cause errors and it'll just be really annoying to go back and forth installing the one library and then uninstalling it and reinstalling the other one so what you can do in Python is or what you can do in Anaconda I should say is create separate environments so you can just switch between the environments depending on what project you're working on and that saves you having all that hassle of creating new uh, or installing new libraries all the time. So at this point I'll assume you've already installed Anaconda and you're kind of familiar with it but uh, if you're not sure how to open it what you want to do is on Windows hit the start bar and just search for Anaconda and you'll see that you've got the Anaconda Navigator and Anaconda Prompt now the navigator is sort of a uh, a GUI version. I personally prefer the prompt because it's a bit easier. Um, but if it's your first time running Anaconda, what you want to do is run the navigator first because it does some configuration stuff, and you want to do that just before you launch the prompt. Uh, but once you've done the configuration stuff, close the navigator and open this one here, which is Anaconda Prompt. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just open the one on my taskbar. And as you can see, it opens up a, a shell basically that you can enter commands into. And it's just like doing it in the navigator, only you've basically got more control and it's good to learn the commands, especially if you're a programmer. So, uh, first thing we want to do then is create an environment. And this is super easy. Uh, all these commands are pretty simple. I'll put them all in the description. So, if you don't want to type them out, you can copy and paste. But you do need to change parts of it, so I recommend you follow along. So we want to type conda create dash dash name, and then we give the environment a name. So for this video, I'm just going to do a YouTube tutorial, and then we follow that with Python uh, Python equals, and you can basically give it any version of Python that you want, and it'll install that version. So if I'm just going to give it Python equals 3 and what this will do is fetch the latest version of Python which I think is 3.7 at this point um, but you can enter Python equals 2 or 2.7 or whatever you want so enter whatever version of Python you want to install and then hit enter and you can see it'll say solve an environment and it should pop up here so uh, it'll ask you do you want to install these default libraries and you want to hit yes or y for yes and then press enter because there's a few libraries in there that we actually need like pip and wheel so if you want to install other packages pip is pretty awesome and I recommend you use it I'll show you in a second how to use that so now you can see it says that to activate this environment use the conda activate command and that's the exact command that we're going to use next so activating an environment basically tells anaconda that this is the environment we want to use from now on. So anything, any commands you enter inside that environment will only be executed in that environment. So if you install something, again, it'll only be installed to that environment. So you want to type conda activate and your environment name, um, which was YouTube tutorial for me. So as you can see now on your command line, you have the name of your environment in brackets and this means anything from here that you execute is in that environment so 
One thing I'm going to show you now is how to install a Python kernel inside the environment. So it used to be that whenever you created an environment in Conda, it used to default install a Python kernel for you. It doesn't do this anymore, I'm not sure why. So I'll show you what I mean though. So if I open Jupyter Notebook, uh, you'll see that they'll take me to a directory and I'll show you this directory actually. So if you open your file explorer and go to your local drive under users and your username, you'll see a folder in here called Anaconda3 and another folder called ENVs. So here you can see all the environments that you've created in Anaconda. So I've got a few more in here, but if you haven't created any yet, chances are you only have one or maybe none. So you can see the one we've just created, YouTube tutorial, and in here it has its own libraries and package managers and things like that. So basically in Jupyter Notebook, this is the same directory, so you want to click Anaconda 3, ENVs, and YouTube tutorial. So if I click new up in the top right, you can see we've only got two kernels available, Python 3 and TensorFlow GPU. Now that's not good because if I want to create a new Jupyter Notebook in this environment, it'll create it in this environment but it'll actually use the kernel of another environment. So it's better to have a kernel for each environment. So I'm going to show you how to add a kernel here so you can use it in the future. So let's close that out a sec and go back to our, our prompt so to close this and what we want to do is pip install ipy kernel and a pip install is python input package and it ins it's, it's a package manager basically and it'll install libraries for you so you want to type pip install ipy kernel and that might take a while uh, I'll leave it run, I'm going to see it. So once that's done, uh, there's a couple more commands and that's basically it. So we want to start with Python uh, minus m ipy kernel install dash dash user dash dash name. And this is basically where we give it a name, uh, the name of the environment that we want to install the kernel to. So in this case, YouTube tutorial. And there you want to uh, dash dash display name and this is the name that we see inside Jupyter Notebook so remember I clicked the drop down this is what you'll see there so you can actually add a different display name if you want to but I'd recommend keeping it the same to avoid confusion and uh, we just hit enter then and you should see that successfully installed kernel spec for YouTube tutorial so now if I relaunch Jupyter Notebook Uh, we should see that there is now another kernel available. So I go back into my environment, new, and as you can see now, there's a, a, another kernel available called YouTube Tutorial. If I click that, I'll create a new notebook inside of this environment with this kernel. And we can just run a simple command uh, hello world. And there we go. So it's ready to go. Um, that's about it for this video. Uh, if you enjoyed or if it was helpful, please consider subscribing and leaving a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. It helps the channel out a lot. If there's any videos you want me to make or any tutorials you want me to make, um, leave a comment below and I'll see if I can get around to them. But yeah, that's about it for now. Uh, take it easy. I'll see you on the next video.